<laughs> so welcome back. <laughs> and here we are. That's high energy. <laughs> oh, the scene has changed. Dude, the scene has changed. The lights no <laughs> <laughs> Except for this one, it's green instead of red. So now we gotta do the lower ball joints and the inverted tie rod ends. So this week on what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty simple. Bang them out. We will have to get the knuckle out of the, off the car because of the way they press up and out. So we're gonna have to get it off and get it on the bench so we can actually get them out and get the new ones in. Unless no, air hammer the shit. Well, out of not everybody has an air hammer. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> So I'll throw you the clip on getting the outer tie rod ends off right now. So for an internal tie rod end, think about it right now, it's off the ground. The suspension is completely slung out and look at how hard of an angle up that tie rod end is. So when this thing's at ride height, this thing has such a hard angle up, it's uh, not ideal geometrically. So that's the whole reason of inverting it, putting it on the bottom, so it's a little nicer on the steering, and you don't get as much bump steer. Keeps everything a little healthier. So we're gonna do that, but first, obviously bust these off. Got little cotter pins. They're really easy. These ones are so small, I can do them by hand. Yeah. Almost. So that's the first plan of action. Did they just see it? They just saw it, dude. Do you believe that? How did they do that? <laughs> So then now we're gonna pull all this stuff off like we were talking before. So to make it a little easier to release this ball joint, we're gonna take the strut off the bottom here so we can pry down while we hammer this and then it'll fall out. You'll see here in a minute. Wait, we we'll get the older over the shoulder view. The aggression. There it is. Now I got all the swing in the world if it breaks this loose. Ready? Yeah, hold it up. No. Oh, well that was easy. That ruined the whole fun, man. You ruined all the fun. Make it hard. This one will be extra hard for you. Just to make up the difference. <laughs> make it look hard. Rod. Big bar. If you got a big bar like that, it works best. You pry on it. But uh, um, this one's going to need a little. Like, a little assistance. Hold on that you got the hammer. Jack under, or hammer. Yeah. Get the hammer. Tenderly hit the. Tenderly hit the joint. The, the joint. Well, you could have actually well, hit that because we don't, we're not going to use it again. So now we're not necessarily doing the order of importance here. We did bust the bottom loose. Take the axle nut out. Take the brakes off so we don't have any rotor and all that jazz going on. Uh, instead of taking the caliper off, you could take the whole assembly and just take the bracket off with it and just pry on the, the rotor uh, caliper a little bit to release the piston, so then it slides off and on back easily, because if you don't, if you pry it off and don't release the piston, it's a real pain to try and get the pads back on the rotor if you take the whole bracket off and everything together at one time. So what I did with a little screwdriver, stick it in here, get into the, the caliper back here, and then just pry on it. And it releases the piston off of that. Really don't forget your hose bracket. And then we can just, Hang that up somewhere. So one and a quarter took off the axle nut. Don't know what the metric size is for that. It's not important. And sometimes you gotta hammer the axle, but this one's loose. So it just comes off like that. And then, last but not least, is upper ball joint. Knuckle will come off, and then we can press this thing apart. Blow the other day too. And then I have to use a little hammer assistance. I missed it. Yeah, either way, he was hammering that there so that it released the taper. Yeah. He was hammering that there. Mm -hmm, that oh. there piece. <laughs> so with these ball joints, they come out and this dust cover is in the way, so we're gonna have to pry this off. We're gonna do our best to salvage it. Oh, look at that, comes right off. Bing. Beautiful. Wow, they want you to do that. So then we can just hammer it back in there. Well, now that ball joint can come right out. So our boy got the P1 racing part, ball joints, extended ball joints. Obviously you can see the difference in how tall they are. So that's gonna give the geometry of the lower control arm in the right correction, in the right spot with it being so lowered. Yeah, but now that we had fun air hammering it out, we can't be so aggressive going back in. Yeah, yeah. So what we got is a 
We have to use a ball joint presser tool, or we can put it in the press itself. All right, so we're using a ball joint tool, ball joint presser tool. You really need to have one if you're gonna do this job just because it's a real pain. Otherwise, not that you could ruin the ball joint. So definitely not using it the way that it was designed just because of how long this ball joint is. I can't use it and just because of the clearances that we have in here. But this is how we got it going on. So basically it just presses against the ball joint as I thread this down and it just pushes it right in the spot here. And I always put some WD-40 around the ball joint so it's a little nicer going right in. And I'll just keep going until I get all the way up. Now these ones come with a snap ring. The stock ones don't have a snap ring, but once you get it all the way pressed in, then it has a little slot here. Slide the snap ring in, put it on. You need a snap ring, or a snap ring pliers. Other ways. Other wheeze, you'll never get that. What it does is it's got these little little eye holes on them. And the tool snaps into there and spreads it. About the spicy the coffee. Dude, now spicy coffee around here is when it's just real strong. Yeah, <laughs> it's really strong. All right, so as far as putting everything back together, it's pretty simple. I put the upper ball joint in first, then I slide the axle in, and then you get the lower ball joint on and obviously I had to put this back in. Best way is to jack it up so you can straighten everything out and get it right. Um, I was showing you the snap ring on that one, but it's pretty simple, you know, you just have to have a snap ring plier, otherwise you're not gonna get what you need on that. So these are hard race inverted tie rod ends. So the way that they go together, instead of the ball joint coming from the top and going down into the knuckle, now you have this rod that goes all the way through it. The one bushing here comes on the tie rod end. Then this other spacer, or sorry, the spacer, this spacer comes on it, and you put it in like that, and the whole shaft comes off and it goes through the bottom, which I showed you earlier. And now we gotta tighten them up, and then just get them in the ballpark as far as straight, and then we can send it to the alignment and get it right, and then she'll be good to go. But since we don't really have a reference for alignment, we're just gonna throw them in right now and then I'll show you a quick way to at least get it close so you can take it to the place. Make sure you take your car directly to the alignment, otherwise you're gonna chew tires and if it's really far out, it could really be messing something up. Yep. I would say we are not close on alignment right now. Well then we might as well get close. Yeah, just now. Um, we need to come in way, way in. Now you can see how much better the angle is. Now let me get the camera the light here. You can see how much better the angle is, how it's straight right now. Obviously it's gonna go up a little bit, but it's way less aggressive of an angle with these inverted tie rod ends. And same thing with these ball joints. How much nicer that's gonna be. Let me get some zoom in here. Actually the camera doesn't look that bad, but definitely towed in pretty good on both sides. Oh, you can tell with that one. So this is just us slapping together. So the way that you do this, you measure the center of the tire tread in the front and then in the back, and you wanna have it like an eighth or something closer in the front than in the back. It gives a little bit of toe in, so at least you can get to the alignment rack. It's gonna feel okay on the road, but it won't be right. But at least on the road, it won't feel like crazy and you won't be hurting anything. So that's just a good way to get it in the ballpark so that you can at least get to where you gotta go. Okay, so the way we wanna do this is get as close as I can to the front of the tread, but obviously, because we're hitting the splash guard and all that stuff, I'm getting as close as I can to the front. Center, and I'm dead center of the tread. And then read whatever you got centered over there. What do you got? Ooh, 57 and three quarters. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the back of the tire. Do the same thing high up as we can without yeah, interfering with anything over here. This is at 59 and a half, or and a quarter. 59? And a quarter. All right, so we're still towed in pretty heavy. So I gotta adjust uh, both of them in, but then we also gotta kind of think about whether they're both out evenly or if one's out to one extreme. It seems like this passenger side's in much more than the other side, so we'll wanna bring this one out and adjust accordingly. Ooh, the lighting is extremely bright. 
All right guys, so something we had happen is when we were adjusting it, all the adjustment came out of the one side, which was telling us that we had the rack, we had the, the steering wheel and the rack in the wrong location. So to get them straight, we had to, we ran out of adjustment on the one side. So it's a really simple fix. What we had to do is get back under the dash here and just break loose the U-joint from the bottom here and the top. And then we slid it all the way up so we could get this U-joint out. And then what we did is just turn the steering wheel a little bit, kept the rack in the same spot, and then just kept adjust and kept moving it over until we got a nice spot so that both our tie rod ends will be right in the middle of adjustment when we have our, at least our base setting, so that there's plenty of adjustment when needed. All right guys, so that does it for this video. Let me know what you think. I know that I didn't do a really good coverage as far as really how to and showing every single step. So if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. I'm definitely here to help you guys out. That's the whole point of this channel is to help you guys get your own stuff accomplished the way you want to. So, you know, if you like it, subscribe, like the video. And other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one.